Introduction. Good morning, sir. Good morning, students. Uh, please sit down. Today we will start a new lesson: rational numbers. You will know how rational numbers are the numbers of everyday arithmetic, and why are they called rational? So let us start a lesson. Objectives. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to distinguish between natural numbers, whole numbers, and integers. Define rational numbers. Learn the addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of rational numbers. Discuss the role of zero and one for rational numbers. Explain additive inverse and multiplicative inverse of rational numbers. Find rational numbers between any two given rational numbers. Whole numbers are simply the numbers zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. There are no fractions. Natural numbers are the positive whole numbers except zero. Integers are like whole numbers, but they also include negative numbers. So integers can be positive, negative, and zero. Students, what about one by two? Is it a whole number, natural number, or an integer? You can see one by two lies between zero and one. We call it a rational number. Come along to know more. A rational number is a number that can be written as a simple fraction, that is, as a ratio. So a rational number looks like this, that is, p upon q. Remember, q cannot be equal to zero. Can you tell which of these numbers are rational? <laughs> yes, all of them are rational. So rational numbers are simply the numbers of arithmetic. Sometimes the rational number can be like that. Do you think that it is in simplified form? No, it can be further simplified. But how? Here we can divide the numerator and denominator by 5 to get 3 by 5. This is the simplest form. So students, remember we can simplify the fraction by dividing the numerator and denominator by a common factor. How to add rational numbers? Hey, it's easy. Before we add, keep in mind the rational numbers should have the same bottom number, that is, both the rational numbers must have common denominator. The easiest way to do this is to multiply both parts of each number by the bottom part of the other. Here is an example of addition. We will add 5 by 4 and 1 by 4. See, the denominators are already the same. Now add the numerators and put the answer over the same denominator. This fraction can be further simplified to 3 by 2. Subtraction of rational numbers is same as the addition. Before subtracting the rational numbers, always look for the common denominator. If it's not common, Multiply both parts of each number by the bottom part of the other. Here is an example of subtraction. We will subtract 1 by 7 from 5 by 7. We know denominators are already the same, so subtract the numerators and put the answer over the same denominator. Now we will study multiplication of rational numbers. This is the easiest one. To multiply two rational numbers, just multiply the numerators and denominators separately like this. Here is an example. We will multiply 1 by 3 and 3 by 5. First of all, we will multiply the numerators. Now we will multiply the denominators. Now this fraction can be further simplified to 1 by 5. 
Division of rational numbers is again very simple thing to do. First of all, flip the second number over and make it a denominator. After that, do a simple multiplication. Here is an example. We will divide 1 by 4 and 1 by 6. Now we will turn the second fraction upside down so that it becomes a reciprocal. Multiply the first fraction by that reciprocal. This fraction can be further simplified to 3 by 2. Here we have added a 0 to a rational number. What did you notice? When we add 0 to a rational number, the sum is always again rational number. For this reason, 0 is called the additive identity of rational numbers. Now check it out the multiplication of a rational number with 1. What did you observe? When we multiply a rational number with 1, the product is always again that rational number. For this reason, 1 is called the multiplicative identity of rational numbers. You may have come across negative numbers while studying, isn't it? Is minus 1 the negative of 1? Yes, it is because 1 plus minus 1 equal to 0. So we say that minus 1 is the negative or additive inverse of 1. Likewise, for any rational number, say 3 by 7, minus 3 by 7 will be its additive inverse. Just think, by which rational number would we multiply 7 by 19 to get the product of 1. Obviously, it's 19 by 7 so as to get the product 1. So we say that 19 by 7 is the reciprocal or multiplicative inverse of 7 by 19. Did you know that there are infinitely many rational numbers between any two rational numbers? Now we will learn about it. Let us find a rational number between these two rational numbers using a mean method. So we can say 3 by 8 lies between 1 by 4 and 1 by 2. First of all, we will find the sum of these numbers which comes out to be 3 by 4. Now divide this sum by 2. We know division flips the second number and sign changes to multiplication. Summary let us summarize what we have learned. A rational number is a number that can be written as p upon q, where p and q are integers and q is not equal to zero. Rational numbers are commutative and associative under addition and multiplication. Zero is the additive identity for rational numbers. One is the multiplicative identity for rational numbers. The additive inverse of p upon q is minus p upon q and vice versa. The reciprocal or multiplicative inverse of p upon q is a upon b if p upon q into a upon b is equal to 1. For all rational numbers a, b and c, a into b plus c is equal to AB plus BC and A into B minus C is equal to AB minus BC is known as the distributive property. Rational numbers between two given rational numbers can be found out using the idea of mean.